Hey guys, Savanger, welcome back to the channel. And as you can see, we're in New Zealand today with the Caribou, the DHC4. Now, obviously, this has been reviewed by many people already, so I'm not going to bother with that. But we are going to go and give her a real test and have some fun with it. Because, you know, will it bush? Yes, it absolutely will. That is the entire point of this aircraft. And i got to say, I'm really impressed with it. So, let's have a quick look, little look around her. But before we do that, let's get our power systems on. We're going to need those as flow decides to start up. So cargo, door master. Let's go outside, shall we? Oh, my controller's stuck on itself. God, I love this. That is so cool. Obviously, you can override the uh, limitation on the uh, lower cargo door, uh, the ramp, and drop it down further, which is super cool. But this is actually really nicely built and equipped with all the usual stuff you'd expect. You've got the ramps there for putting vehicles or other equipment inside. Seating. You've got hospital litters. And a small little galley. Not a big aeroplane, but more than big enough for many, many jobs. And this thing is beautifully made. I've got to say, really impressed with how they put it together. Looks great. Both inside and out. Really nicely made. Although, you see where that panel line is there? There is a seam there. Just like here. Where it seems like they and every third party uh, livery creator has a derp in the model. There is something along this top seam that's causing weird uh, ambient occlusion discoloration on every livery that I've seen of it so far. And same with this one on the nose. So, something perhaps to look at. Because something not quite right there. You can see it up there as well. Look at it. Some sort of poly issue is happening. In fact, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can see the cut there along it. Yeah. So that's where there's definitely an issue of deformation with the model. Leading to uh, a pretty unsightly seam line. And this is one of their stock liveries. So I'm not sure how they didn't notice that little uh, snafu. But there you go. Uh, let's get back inside. Let's get this thing started up. We'll go over how that works. And uh, how to get everything functioning. Now, obviously, she's uh, not full system depth. We're working what we've got here. Obviously, it has the working title 430 in there. But essentially, we have up here a uh, gust lock for the throttle. If you do not move this, you will not be able to go to full throttle. It will be really tragic. Uh, mags are up here. There we go. Set to both. Flaps are up there as well. Our engine anti-icing. We've got electrical and we've got our circuit breakers here. They're all inoperative. Uh, but, oh no, some of them actually do operate. What was that one? So it's left and right fire extinguisher. There's some really weird choices of what's functional and what's not, actually, with this. Because the GPS, you can't disconnect. Um, interphone, you can, which does nothing in the aircraft, but there you go. Turn and slip. Uh, we've got various avionics ones. Okay, so quite a few of these do work. That's kind of cool. Those do not. That does not. Of course, we do have... Okay, that's our cabin lighting. We don't need that right now. So let's get these closed whilst we're here, because we don't really want to fly around with these open. At least not in this condition. Obviously, we'd flip this and we'd hit this and we could override the limit on the, the actual ramp and extend it further down, which is good for ground loading. Once those are closed, those will be able to be reset. It takes a second. Hmm. Okay, set so those to off. Cover those down, and we'll map cargo door master to off. And we do also have the little door here, which we can close and open with a click spot on the side. Now, I wonder what this actually does. Instrument transformer selector. Hmm. Not sure. But either way, one thing I don't like is you can't move the armrests. That would be kind of cool. Not the end of the world. And the windows to open, which would have been really cool, but it isn't the end of the world. Gorgeously made on the interior here. And, uh... Just getting my phone back from a family FaceTime. As we'll go through our startup down here. So, obviously, parking brake is here. That is set. What we'll need to make sure we consider is, of course, we have our fuel doodads. 
around here somewhere. I keep forgetting where those are located. But I do know there's the... Nope. No, there isn't. Never mind. Don't worry about it. So, Master Start is here. And we have our Battery Masters already on. So, we have our Primer. So, left and right Primer. Obviously, it's a very simplified starter procedure because, well, it's not full depth. So, there you go. It's that simple. And Primer stays on rather than being held. And it starts. So, it's nice and simple. Uh, I guess after the Realism mod for the DC-3, I'd, I'd love a Realism mod for this. This would be really cool. I think this aircraft would absolutely benefit from the Realism mods that are out there. Um, but as it stands, it does not have a Realism mod. So we are operating with very basic stock aircraft kind of engine physics. So you can go over your start procedures and do it accu absolutely accurately. Uh, that's not what I've done here, but uh, there you go. So what we're doing today is we're flying up the coast to two very short airstrips. To Martins Bay Aerodrome which is 1,700 feet, and to Gorge River Airstrip, which is 1,200 feet in a cargo plane, because we can. Does this even have my trip in it? It does not. Well, we'll work this out as we go. Because <laughs> apparently this is how it wants to do things today. Today it shows violence. Right, shouldn't be too complicated for us though, so we'll get the parking brake released here and we'll get my head switched on. Now we're in a very tight confines here, so we're going to use differential throttle to get us turned around. So just left engine. It's quite confined up here. And then we're able to hit the taxiway and get ourselves to the runway here, so we'll be out of here in no time whatsoever. Well, that's the caravan I'm about to dissect the tail on. Visibility is fantastic, obviously, being a nose wheel aircraft compared to older models. So we have a good deal of visibility when taxiing. And she's surprisingly narrow, given her size. And this is why a lot of the DLC stuff needs to be installed, because you've got literal straight models from the actual sim versions for a lot of these aircraft. So Milford Town was always cool. I've loved flying in New Zealand before this update, and the update has really made the place look fantastic. Oh, my head tracking did not like me doing that. I'm going to take out a bush. Not the end of the world. There we go. Okay, here we go. So we're going to select one stage flaps for takeoff. We don't need it, but we're going to do it anyway. Bags of room here. Literally tons. Go a little overcorrected. All right, we'll go for a short takeoff, shall we? Engines to full power. That's new. This is definitely interesting. Okay. Um, I'm seeing the lights come on down here. So oil pressure's not up. That is so strange. Okay, now she wants to move. That was a really weird glitch there. It could be a controller uh, glitch, but the engine throttled up. They just didn't want to move. Okay, speed's coming up. And we're going to pick her up now. Once she's up, put the nose down. Gear coming up. This aircraft will do so much. Notice that mountain ahead. Does it look familiar? Have you ever watched Indiana Jones? Well, the Paramount Mountain, for their logo, they use this. Or th they wanted a mountain that looked like their logo. You know, when it goes from the logo into uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, at the intro, where they're in the jungle. Well, they superimposed this mountain here, down at Milford Sound, to be that mountain, which isn't in the jungle, it's in fact in New Zealand. So we're going to head down the fjord here and get ourselves out to the coast, then take a right northbound, and we're going to head our way up to the first of our airports, which is Martins Bay. And this is grass, 1,700 feet, we should be absolutely fine. And then we have 1,200 feet of dirt.
pull this back. This thing feels like an absolute sedate little bus when you're actually flying it because it's so big, it's so powerful. You don't feel like you're really going anywhere, but she'll just haul herself around happy all day long. This really is the kind of aircraft I love. Now, give me a C-119 and a C-123, and I will be so happy. A boxcar and a provider, I'll fly nothing else. I believe we also have news that Milvis slash Blackbird are dropping their DHC-3, their Otter. This is the season of bush pilots this year. We've got a mole coming, we're getting an otter, and not just any old otter, turbine and piston with full systems depth and realism, like 310 level systems, according to what I've heard. I am very excited. I cannot wait for these. The otter is one of my favorites along with the beaver, so it is gonna be a great year. We're getting A to A, we're getting a full systems depth otter, a mole. Now someone give me a 206 or a 207 and I'm good. I'm happy for life. Look how slow we're moving. Yeah. Feels like we're absolutely chugging along here. Nudge to throttle there. We're not chugging along, but it feels very much like it. It's weird being in such a big aircraft for once. Let's turn my head off and quickly take a look down here. Yeah, we're doing 147 uh, knots, apparently. Go figure. It's just... It's a big plane. I guess everything feels smaller the bigger the aircraft gets. But this, uh, this thing has amazing short fuel performance. It can absolutely work so hard. The instant response we get from the radials, coupled with the power they have, and the fact that this aircraft is so has such a huge wing to it. If we go outside here, look at the size of this wing. It is absolutely massive. And that kind of angle you see there, the gull wing angle, where it goes down then up again, that's actually helping provide it more lift. It's changing how the angle of attack affects uh, the aircraft's lift. You see the Corsair does that, and a couple of others do it. And it's in quite a few space plane designs, because it provides a more compact, but also larger lift capability. Got more lift to the wing roots, so more stability. So it provides for a very interesting aircraft. She's ungainly and she's ugly, but you know what? I, th I say she's beautiful. I say she's absolutely beautiful. This is a workhorse. Alright, so we just head up the coast from here. We find our first one, which is Martins Bay. We should be just up along the coast here. Get some trim in. So we do have our uh, radios and systems down here. We have our transponder. We do not have an autopilot that I'm aware of. But then again, this isn't really an autopilot flying aircraft. This is a hand fly this baby kind of job. Although, I could be wrong. Now we do have... Uh, showing what we're actually getting out of performance wise. Let's bring back our zoom manifold at 40 inches there. About 22 and a half for our RPM. Now we're in cruise. And it still gets longer, a fair lick. I've got to say, it's built beautifully. This looks fantastic. The standard of aircraft we're getting in this sim are absolutely stunning. Martin's Bay shouldn't be too much further up the coast. So whilst I'm just here with you guys, we'll do a little history on the Caribou. So it was originally, um, obviously, designed by de Havilland Canada. Uh, it was designed as a short takeoff and landing cargo aircraft, which has been a big demand from DHC for those kind of aircraft. Look at the Beaver. It was built towards the bush market, and this was built similarly. Uh, first flew in 1958, and it was mainly retired from military operations now, but it's still used in plenty of you know bush uses. Um, so, of course, it was introduced in 1961, where it first operated. The last operator militarily was the Royal Australian Air Force. They retired there in 2009. Here's the airport coming up on our right. And 
just look at some stats of this beast. And there was a Turbo Caribou program, we didn't go very far. So the 4A, obviously two crew and a loadmaster, 30 passengers in a civil config, 32 troops, 26 paratroopers fully equipped, 22 stretchers, useful for medevac from a tight confines, um, with four attendants. She has a 95 foot wingspan and she's 72 feet long. Now, her basic uh, maximum payload is 8,700 pounds. That is a lot. Two Pratt & Whitney R2000 twin wasp engines, putting out a 1,400 horsepower each, with this big three-blade Hamilton standard props on there. And their reversible pitch, you can reverse pitch in this aircraft. Yes, that's a thing. Martin's base should be just up here for us, so let's get ourselves fully comfortable on the controls. It's time to get flying. Oh, hello. A little bit of chop there. I've noticed turbulence in the sim has gotten dramatically greater since gliders really arrived. Not sure if it's connected to how they operate thermals, but I've noticed it for sure. When we get on the ground here, we'll put in the GPS for uh, Gorge River. Because I'm not going to be too sure where that one is. So I'll wait till we're landed to do that. And we'll have a potter around. I'm still not too familiar with this aircraft, but what does this do? Short field approach speed. Okay. Ah. Oh, okay. I'm not sure what this does, but we'll see what happens when we start our approach. Coming up on things here. Start pulling back on our throttles. Should be past this next headland, I believe. I've been here before, back in my FSX days. I'm pretty sure it's on the bank of the river up ahead, just in front of that ridge line. So we come past this headland, we'll take a turn to the right, and we'll get ourselves in position to make an approach. If I recall, it's a short, sloping runway. There's grass. I could be wrong. I'm frequently wrong, but I'm pretty sure I remember this one. Where are you? We've got the mouth of the river there. Oh, hell up. The hell was that? That was a bit turbulent. Where are you? You will get affected a lot more by turbulence with how big the wings are on this thing. She could be quite choppy at times. This is dramatic. And we're only using a standard weather here. We're using scattered clouds, so it shouldn't be anything exciting. We've got wind of four knots. So this is quite unusual that it's behaving kind of like this. But I've noticed this in the sim in general for, since Glide has arrived. Right, where are you? I know it's across this river. I believe it's on this far bank ahead of us. That could be it to our just immediate 11 o'clock. I think it may be. Let's just take a look over there, shall we? One of the things I love about this new sim, and I still call it the new sim, is finding things is much harder than it used to be. You don't have this square anymore of airport. And yeah, Orbex airports didn't have that, but I think that's us right there. Yes, it is. On our right. Yep, that's our runway. <laughs> Told you we're going bush flying in this thing. That's not a lot of width, though. I don't think we have 95 feet of width. Yeah, that's going to get challenging. Oh, no. It's mostly pretty wide. Okay, I think we got this. If not, they'll chop a few trees down. It's big. We'll knock them out of the way. You know, I had someone comment on a video the other day saying, I'm obviously not a real pilot because uh, apparently I got my nose wheel stuck at one point on an add-on grass airstrip in the mountains and I had a prop strike. I don't remember the prop strike, but I tend to ignore things like derping, bouncing, ground handling because it's a simulator. It's not real. Ground physics are weird sometimes. Sorry if that disqualifies me from being a pilot, but I don't take things as if my absolute life is at risk every time I jump in a simulator. 
if I stopped the aircraft every time something weird happened, like I would in real life, I'd never go flying. So whatever. Haters gonna hate. Alright. Props full fine. Let's get this thing configured here. Two stages of flaps down, gears coming down. I can't see the strip yet, so we might be off center on our approach angle here. But 100 knots, so let's try and keep this balanced. There's the field. Okay, let's slow her down, shall we? This is where it's going to get interesting, coming in off of this river and the trees. No, behave yourself. Good girl. Okay, power back. Let's bring her in nice and gentle. We're at idle power. Try to keep my eye over the nose. We're coming kind of a high alpha, so our nose is pretty high, which makes visibility kind of difficult. And it's a, I don't know why it's so choppy. Yeah, we're definitely knocking trees down here. We're doing this just to see we can. This isn't realistic. Into reverse out of reverse and we did it actually I'm just gonna stop us here and take a quick look outside not a ton of run we used I think we'll manage gorgeous river won't we yeah and actually you know what okay maybe knocked a tree down there and a couple of bushes got schwacked but it is bush flying after all so I'd say I understood the, the, the task. Yeah, we, we're bush flying. We're flying in, in the bush, quite literally in a bush. So this feels entirely appropriate. All right, let's get these flaps up here. We'll put one stage flaps down. I do not know what that instrument does at the top of my glare shield. It has fast and slow, and it has something to do with uh, stall indications, but I don't know what it means. Let's get ourselves turned around up here. This is definitely a mall type airstrip, not a, a, car a caribou airstrip. <laughs> okay, we'll just hold here while I mess with the GPS a second and we work out what we're doing. So we need November Zulu Quebec Echo. P Q Echo Gorge River, that's the one we want. Okay, bingo. Let's get ourselves out of here, shall we? This time it takes off a full throttle. There we go. Let's get her out of here, shall we? Clobber of the tree on the way out. Hey, it's free lawn care services. You're welcome. There's the uh, little hunting lodge down there on our way out. Oh, we're low on airspeed. I shouldn't be turning this early, but we'll try and level it out a bit more. That's it, girl. Come on. Climb out, you big ungainly beast. I feel most at home in these kind of aircraft. I don't know why. But big radial cargo planes are my vibe. Now your D DC uh, fours, DC sixes, perhaps a little bit less. But the more rugged aircraft, I mean the DC four is pretty rugged. But the big, more rugged aircraft, uh, your Caribous, your Providers, your Vox cars, your DC threes, they're my home. Like I love those aircraft. That is my vibe. Okay, heading up the coast here. Shouldn't be long. Not a very far trip at all. A couple of minutes. But this one's going to be difficult. I guarantee this will be too narrow. If that was too narrow, 
This absolutely will be. But we can definitely land at 1,200 feet. So we'll complete that much. We'll stop. We may not have wingtips. We may become a clipped wing caribou. No antlers. But uh, we'll see how we make this. Now this one should be grass, I believe. It's not too far away at all. really is a gorgeous aircraft, isn't it? I just love how ugly she is. It feels so beautiful. It's utilitarian. It's it's productive. It's like the beaver. Obviously, it's a DHC design, but she's so functional. It's like the Glock of aeroplanes. It is built with every design element for a purpose. The big high tail, the tall landing gear, the great visibility from the cockpit, the really low nose as well to aid visibility huge control system. Look at the size of those things. They are massive. And the humongous flaps. The exhausts up high, less debris in them. Tight intakes. Big tyres. Huge cargo capacity. She's built to work. That's what she's for. No, we're off target because we're not in this bay. We're heading across the headland here. And we should not be too far away at all. Power's looking good here. Now, I know a lot of people, autopilots are almost a requirement for what they want to do with flying. Because obviously, you don't want to sit there for a couple of hours hand flying. It's a massive pain in the backside. And I agree. It is. Um, I don't know if these actually had them as options. We'll take a look around, see if there is one. I might be completely wrong. That's calm. There's calm. Those are nav radios. That's ADF. Transponders up there. Audio. Okay. Check we're not going to hit anything. Electricals, we've got jump signals there, jump lights. No, I'm pretty sure she's a hand flying girl. Yeah, we don't have an autopilot, but I'm not bothered. Not myself. Right, we're not too far away. There's another little airstrip down just to our right there. I don't see where it is. But it was down behind us. God, that's a view, isn't it? That is a view and a half. God, I want to go flying in Vietnam with this thing now. Flying into fire bases. Okay, we're coming up on Gorge River. So we're looking for the airstrip out here on the headland. So I'm going to come out to see a little bit so we've got better visibility of where we're actually doing this. And I'm going to make it in here. Whether the aircraft leaves or not is another matter. But we are making it in here. So let's see what we can do. Oh, if you're interested in doing the wheelbarrow, the classic, you know, nose wheel down, tail, uh, main gear up in the air, maneuver the caribou can do. On takeoff, full power, full throttle flaps, and just hold the nose down. Hold the controls forward. The back legs will come up. Now, do not landing's a little trickier, but it is possible. Okay, we're imminently coming up on that now. Should be just past here. Let's pull our power back so we know what's going on. Is that it? Off our uh, one o'clock? I think it might be. Yeah, I think that's it over there. Okay, that's got good open approaches to it. We can do this. We can do this. Not a problem. We'll do a low pass, check out the runway surface. I want to try and make this one perfect and go as short as we can. Yeah, we've got really nice open approaches to this over the water, so... 
We should be okay. Doing one notch of flaps here. We're getting wobbly again. Come on, down. Oh, this is tight. I don't know if we're making this. Now, a shrubbery on the right better be low as hell. That's rocky on the left. Oh, man, this is not a good idea. We're just doing a check here. We're not landing. We're just checking it out. Oh, boy. Yeah, we're cutting the grass here. Dear God, this is ridiculous. That looks cool as hell. My God. Okay. Let's get out of here. Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Well, here goes nothing, as they say, right? I think the left approach is going to be our clearest. So the way we just came in for that check run, it looks a little bit conflicted on that end, so... Yeah, we're coming from the left. This is going to be a stupid idea. I'm normally a big proponent of stupid ideas. They're great, but... This is on top of the list. Once I get a setup on final, I'm going to put the full flaps down and show you those, because they're monstrous. I mean, this is already one stage of flaps. Yeah, that's one stage. Look at this ugly beast. She's so stunning. Okay. Alright, let's get this girl turned around and ready for prom night. What am I doing? This is stupid. Flaps coming down to full. Oh, what am I doing? We might be a bit too fast here. We are going to make this, though. It might not be this time. What am I doing? This is a really stupid idea. This is really stupid. I feel fast. I feel fast. I feel kind of fast. No. Flaps up, flaps up, flaps up, flaps up, flaps up, flaps up. I don't like that direction. Ooh. That's what you call rejected takeoff. Things got real squirrely real fast there. We're not doing that. We're coming from the other direction. We'll see if it's better. But that was not good. You gotta learn when to say no. Apparently I say no really late. Hmm. Don't quote me on that. Alright. Let's bring around. Nice amount of time to establish my descent. Okay, we're good over there. Let's bring around. Flaps in motion. Okay, got the strip coming into view. Head tracking has revolutionized my world. I, I can't believe I used to fly without it. Okay, it's just out of sight. There it is. Okay, we got it. Okay, we'll drag her in on power for this one. It's going to be a nice high alpha approach. The, re the benefit of high alpha is you come in, you're, you're using power to keep your aircraft still flying. Because normally you descend much and, and your impact point will be sooner than the runway. So by using power, you're kind of... In you're extending that, but you're using energy as you create it rather than storing it. So when you come in at a super angle, you're, you've got a lot of 
potential energy, and that takes you longer to slow down. The higher the alpha, the lower that energy, meaning you can actually stop a lot quicker. Okay, I feel much more comfortable with this. Speed's better. Come on, you fat beast. Let's do this. Let's dance. Let's dance. God damn! That is how much room will be used. Yeah, that. That is how much room we used. In a plane that size, we used like five plane lengths. And that was a fairly soft landing. Okay, that's just under half, so we used about five, six hundred feet. We're not very heavy right now, we don't have a lot of payload on board. Uh, so, with payload, probably use the whole thing. But we could do it, and my god, the scenery here is stunning. Look at this. That is beautiful. Wow. Alright, let's see if we can turn this old pig around. Stand on one of the brakes, and we're hitting the bush. Ah, shrubbery, not the end of the world. Yes, and again, not entirely realistic, but at the same time, I, it's fun. Look where we are. Look at what environment we've managed to land in. The beautiful northern coast of South Island, New Zealand. They're going to be shocked when we pull up. Hi, guys. Room for one more? <laughs> oh, knocked my headphones off. There we go. Cut the engines. I cannot see my controller in the darkness, so. Yeah. I mean, the gorgeous river over there is stunning as well. I'll have to go flying down that. Apart from that, but you'd think if they're doing a an add-on airfield where they're doing specific handcrafted scenery, you wouldn't have a floating river, would you? No? Didn't think about that, did you guys? No. That kind of ruins the whole buzz. But look at this. This is gorgeous couple working in their garden. This is actually really pretty. God, that's lovely. You've got sheds there and another one there. And this is the actual... Okay, it's a marine reserve. Nice. And we just landed this honker here. Absolute monster. I don't think I can taxi further or I'll take the roof off that building. But there we go. <laughs> what a trip. Hopefully you enjoyed that, guys. And uh, I will see you very, very soon. Bye.